Welcome. I'm going to be doing a quick walkthrough of the Hapara Teacher Dashboard for you. Um, we'll go through all the basic tabs and uh, features of this program so you can use it easily in your classroom if you have a chance. The first time you sign into Teacher Dashboard, you'll see your class's home screen. This information is entered into Dashboard by the Hapara people. For Wetaskiwin Regional, they're providing them with our Maplewood data to get this set up and running. So however your classes are entered into Maplewood at your school is how your classes will appear in your teacher dashboard when you go in there. When I enter into my class, I see all my students come up. Parts of their driver shown to me. I can see things that they've been working on recently. If I click on any of these documents around here, it'll open that document up in another tab for me so I can have a look. You'll notice it shows me if they've worked on it recently or if they have worked on it at all or who the last person to have modified the document is. So it's just a really nice quick glance at what the students have been doing in their drives. Up here beside the students' names, you'll notice a little square box that has different colors for my kids. Um, you can change the color of this box to put students into groups, to single students out for adaptations, or if you have students on IPPs or different types of modifications in the classes can be really handy. Um, if you teach a split class, uh, you may want to do your one grade one color and another grade another color to, as a real visual reference um, and it can also be used for some other things down the line so um, changing these colors here is very easy click on the little box this pops up and you can pick a color um, to change it to so that you can put your students into light colored groups on every student tab you'll also see two little tiny buttons. One of them looks like an envelope. This one allows you to send your student a Gmail message right from your dashboard. You just click on it and a new window will pop up with an email message ready for you to type in and send out to this student. If you click the file folder it'll open the student's drive and open in particular their main folder. The main folder is set up by the Hapara people when they set your dashboard up for you. So this appears for the students along with a folder in your drive when your dashboard gets up and running for you. Everything that you send out to the students through dashboard will be stored in this main folder. From this main dashboard screen, we'll also take a look up here in the right hand corner at a couple of things. You can change how many items you're viewing for each student in a drop down list. You can also change how your students are organized in that dashboard screen. Um, you can change this in all of the tabs that you go into. When you click it, it'll give you some options for how you want to sort them. Make sure that you click apply students layout when you're done to make your changes. <clears throat> here we can enter a filter that's going to change what we're seeing when we are looking in this folder so if we wa want to find a particular assignment that the students worked on we can type the name of that assignment in here and it's going to filter out all the things in their folders that aren't connected to this assignment or don't have these words in its name the little arrows help refresh so that's going to refresh what you're seeing here from the time that you opened it in case things have changed since the time you opened this window. <clears throat> so that's the dashboard tab. Next we'll look at the Gmail tab. This one's pretty self-explanatory and straightforward. Uh, it gives you a chance to look at the students' inboxes, their sent folders, and their trash bins for their Gmail accounts. Now this isn't their personal Gmail, of course. This is for their school Gmail account. Um, so students need to be reminded that those accounts for, are for school purposes, whether they're using them when they're at home or at school. And this is a really great way for you to keep an eye on things and the kids knowing that it's there uh, should be prevention from anything happening in these email accounts. On the sharing tab, you're going to have a look in the students' drives. 
However, they have their things organized in their drives is how you're going to see it here. You can again change how many items you're seeing. You can change how the students are organized. You can put a filter on if you're looking for something specific. You can also see if there's any documents that they're sharing in public or sharing with external people. You can have a look at their whole drive here. I forgot to mention we're looking at unshared. You can have a look at everything in their drive. You can look into their trash bins and you can also look at their Picasso web albums if you happen to do those with them. Moving right along under the interact tab, you can look at two different things. You can look at the browser tabs that the students currently have open. So this will show your whole class in a grid and everything in a list the browser tabs that they all currently have open on their devices so that's a way to keep an eye on what they're doing you can also have a quick look at their current screens to see which one of those pages it is that they're working at <clears throat> on each student panel again you have some buttons for interacting with them this little chatty pop-up button will pop a message up that you want to send out to this student something that'll interrupt the work they're doing and, and send them the information you want to send them immediately you can also send an email from here directly to the student or take a picture of their web screen this button will send out a tab to this student if I click it a little win window pops up with the space here that I can copy and link copy and paste a link from a web page into and it will open a tab on the student's device with that web page open in it I can also do the same thing for the whole class by using this button if I push it same window pops up paste a link in there send it out all of my students, a new tab is going to open up on their machine and it's going to have whatever web page I sent out to them on it. That's a really great way to pull something up for research for the whole class or something that you want to show them all at one time and have them interact with. This button will let you send a single pop-up message out to every student in the class. So you're running out of time, you want to let them know that there's only five minutes left. That's a really great way to send it out to them and it'll pop up on their screens and let them know whatever you want to let them know. The last tab is the class info button. It has a few different things in there that you want to have a look at. Uh, your students' names, first names and last names are actually listed uh, over here along with their student ID numbers. For every student you have the option to reset the password. You can choose a default password and type it into this box. Uh, the name of your school is a handy one for a first time login for all of your students to use. Check this box and it will make the students reset the password when they log in. So they'll use this default password the one time. Immediately it will pop up and ask them to choose a new password and type it in twice to, to verify it. Students should always make sure that their passwords are at least eight characters long. They shouldn't ha have their name in it or it will pop up as a simple password or something that could be easily guessed and then they're going to get the read the squiggles tests all the time when they're trying to log in. Down at the bottom of this page, you're going to find an email address that's set up for your class that just will send an email out to everybody in your class list if you use that address. There's also a list of all their email addresses here that can be copied and pasted uh, if, if you need a list of all the email addresses for anything else that you're doing. And then also a CSV address list that has their first name, last name, and their email address is all ready to be inserted in a spreadsheet or a uh, a script app like Doctopus imports this information so that's really nice for running rosters for that. Now we're going to go back to the dashboard tab and look at this little guy here, the smart copy. Smart copy is going to allow us to send something out to the whole class at once. When you start it up, it'll ask you if you'd like to use something you already have in your drive somewhere to send out to everybody or if you want to create a new blank document. And it can be a document, a slideshow, presentation, a spreadsheet, doesn't matter. 
Next, it's going to ask you a few things about how you want to send this document out. If you want each student to have their own separate copy of the document to work on. If you want to send it out as a read only, a read comment, or a read write document. In all three of these cases, the students will be able to see the document, but they would not necessarily be able to edit it. In these two, no editing. Here they can insert comments on the side but not edit the actual document. And in the third case it would be a shared document that everybody can edit and write on. Most often I'm sending out individual separate copies to each student. Sometimes it might be an individual copy to some and a modified one to a group of others. It's going to ask you to name it, um, use your assignment name. You can insert their first name or their last name, both using these little shortcuts so that for every student it's going to appear this way. Mary comparing Canada's, whatever this title was going to be. Um, you can't use a personalized title, so you can't put their first names in if it's shared with more than one student. Now we can decide who it's going out to. We're going to they're all selected by default. You can unselect any if you don't want to send it out to them. Here's where you can decide if you're sending different things to different groups or if you're not sending something to certain groups. We could also decide to send things out according to those color groupings that we set up here in our dashboard. We want to tell dashboard what to do if the student already has a document in their drive that has that name. So we can either tell it to leave the student document alone and not to put the new document in there or else to delete the student document and replace it with the one that we're sending out. Before you send it out you can look over what you've chosen for your options and make sure this is exactly what you want to do before you hit start copy. Once you start copy it's going to run its process and spin and when it's done you'll get this little pop-up telling you that it has sent your list out to all your students should be listed in here. So that's teacher dashboard in a nutshell. Um, just a little quick little review. That smart copy button is up here. That's how you send documents out to your class. Refreshing over here will make everything that you're seeing in this window or any window that you're looking at current. If the students are working live and you've had your window open for a while, the refresh button is going to give you a more current picture of what's been going on. The interact tab is where you can look at what the students are doing specifically and peek into their drives and their mailboxes and all that good stuff. The sharing tab uh, lets you have a look at their whole drive, everything that's in there. Um, class info, resetting passwords. Uh, the younger the grades you teach, the more often you're going to be in that tab. So you're definitely going to want to remember where that is. Thank you for watching. I hope that you learned something from this video and that you get your dashboard up and running soon.